Hi, everybody. This is Maxine Taylor, America's first licensed astrologer. And I am here with my astrological overview for uh, November 2023. Um, after I record this one, then I'm going to go through each of the signs. And all you're going to do is select your sun sign and or your rising sign and watch them and you'll have a really complete picture of what all is going to be going on in your life during November. First, though, I, I'm so excited to share this with you. I probably mentioned this before. My latest book is called Secrets from the Womb, and it's subtitled The Hidden Pact that runs your life. This book is not for everybody. This is for the spiritual uh, student who is sick and tired of watching the same scenario of their life play out. Different people, same story. S-S-D-D. Um, and this student has tried everything, uh, for everything spiritual, uh, perhaps, or nothing spiritual. Astrology, uh, numerology, psychology, um, and yet they keep going back into their story. I asked God to show me why I did that, and I was given this information. Um, I have testimonials from people I've worked with. Their lives have changed instantly, instantly. Um, and from then on, you're on a different path. It's a path of love and light and truth. And those words I've come to see fall hollowly compared to what you will experience when you take the three steps, three little steps that I've described in this book and the um, testimonials from uh, my students and clients uh, that are thrilling, unbelievable changes have taken place. So if you're interested in this, it's available on Amazon, of course, give them a call. Um, email them, Secrets from the Womb. Okay, next announcement. Um, a lot of you have asked me uh, about my astrology classes. I am going, I have just finished up a series of classes uh, that have lasted a pro uh, almost a year. Um, and I am thrilled to say that um, I think there are three people in a class of nine because you start with a large group and then people drop by the wayside because they realize that there's a lot to astrology they didn't know before. Even though I simplify it, you have to really want it. And if you would like to be an astrologer, I will share everything I know with you. So, um, I am going to be offering a whole series of classes in January, January 2024. If you're interested, um, you just go to my website, MaxineTaylor.com. Shoot me an email because I'll have the, the information is probably up there now. But the actual date and time and all that good stuff uh, will go up if it's not already there. Okay. I don't, I have to look at it to see if it's up there already. Okay. In addition to the group classes, which are uh, done once a week um, on Zoom, and everybody gets a video of it, um, I'm going to resume my mentoring. Uh, you might not want to study astrology 
in a group of people. You may be the kind of person you've studied astrology on your own, perhaps, and you want one on one instruction from me based on your chart, your kids charts, your spouse's charts, your dog's chart. You know what I'm saying? Um, you uh, would probably benefit from uh, me mentoring you because you will move at your own pace. You will not need the beginning information. If you do, that's where we'll start. But it will be based on you and your chart. That Your chart is your textbook. So you really get more bang for the buck because of your textbook. So um, I think that's it. Oh, Daylight Savings Time ends 2 a.m. November 5th. I think that those are all the announcements. Now. Let's talk about November 2023. First of all, um, we have uh, on the new moon. Let me, for those of you who who may not be familiar with the new moon and the full moon, uh, I will explain it very simply. On the new moon, that's when energy starts uh, growing. Um, of just, you know, just prior to the new moon, which is, uh, I would say, two days before the new moon, we are in what is called the dark of the moon. When you look at the heavens, you, you can't see the moon. And the moon rules function and form and change and mother uh, emotions. Um, oh, gosh, so many things. Uh the past, past memories, uh, your subconscious mind. I mean, I mean, I could go on and on and on. So uh, on the dark of the moon, that's a time to chill. Don't begin a new project on the dark of the moon because there's no energy being put forth. On the new moon, the energy starts growing. And this is a terrific time. Um, Assuming Mercury is not retrograde, of course. So uh, this is a, a, a super time to begin a new project. The new moon in November is the 13th, okay? And it is in Scorpio, 20 degrees, 44 minutes of Scorpio. Find 20 Scorpio 44 in your birth chart. And I'm going to describe it to you in your solar chart. Take the two and combine them and you've got a real great um, interpretation of the month of November. Okay, the moon, new moon is growing, it's growing, it's growing. Two weeks after the new moon, the energy has been building and building and building and it's tense. It's like you've taken... Um, a guitar string, and you've tightened it and tightened it and tightened it until it explodes. That's the full moon. Now, this explosion is not a bad thing. It simply brings it, it, things to a head. Um, and I do suggest that you not go toe-to-toe -to -toe, toe -to -toe with somebody on the full moon because one or both of you is probably going to apologize afterwards when things simmer down okay so on the full moon things come to a head um and the full moon in november is the 27th it's in four gemini 51 okay find four degrees 51 minutes of gemini in your birth chart and that is where things will come to a head. Have you been waiting for a check to come in? Um, see where the full moon is. Because this is a terrific time for a check to come in. And you may be saying any time is a great time for a check to come in. And, and I do understand that. But things will come to a head. And then the next two weeks, energy starts waning and waning and waning until we once again have 
that we are in the dark of the moon. So that's how it works. Now let's talk about where the planets are this month. First of all, the sun, which is the giver of life. It is the center of our universe. It's in what I consider to be the most powerful sign in the entire zodiac, and that is Scorpio. Scorpio is all or nothing. It's transformation, transmutation. It's magic. Um, so the sun will be in Scorpio until November 22nd when it moves into Sagittarius, which is totally different. Sag spreads its wings and soars. Sag says, I want freedom. Scorpio says, I want to get to the bottom of what's real, really going on. Scorpio is a natural psychic detective. And Sagittarius is a natural student of human nature. You understand human beings. Um, the rest of us really should be sitting at your feet, listening to what you've got to say. On the 22nd of November, the sun moves into Sag and it, things lighten up immediately. Some of you are very, very sensitive to energies. You are psychic, you are empathic, you are natural healers. I know it uh, because that's what I attract to me. Uh, so welcome all, I, all of you. Okay, Venus is the planet of love and beauty and money. It is in Virgo, okay? It's been in Virgo. Virgo crosses every T and dots every I. Virgo wants to be of service. Virgo is a perfectionist. Virgo drives themselves crazy because they want to be perfect. Um, and Virgo wants to serve. Well, Venus is love. And exactly what I described, art, beauty, love, music, uh, abundance. And so on the 8th, it moves into Libra, its own sign. And this is lovely because Libra wants balance and harmony. And uh, Libra is the sign of partnership. And so what you're going to do is take your attention off of your job and put it on your relationships. Lovely. Mercury. This is very interesting. Um, Mercury, first of all, rules the conscious mind. OK, um, I told you that the, the moon rules the subconscious mind. Mercury in Scorpio means Mercury is talking about what's really going on. Mercury wants to get to the truth of everything that is. OK, so our thinking has been deeper. Our communication has been deeper and it's going to stay that way until the 10th. When Mercury moves into Sagittarius and, you know, Sag, you can tell Scorpio your secrets. They'll take them to their grave. Don't give your secrets to Sag. Nothing wrong with Sag. They're marvelous people. Um, but they, they tell the truth. You ask them a direct question, they'll give you a direct answer. And if you have been sworn to secrecy that uh, about that issue that's being asked, okay, there, there can be a little issue there. Um, now, when Mercury goes retrograde, <clears throat> it won't be going retrograde in November, but when it goes retrograde, everything is confused. Communication, correspondence, transportation. It rules our mouth and our minds. So uh, before uh, Mercury goes retrograde, which it does three times a year, it moves into the shadow of the retrograde. Now, let me tell you what this is. When Mercury's retrograde, we do not, under any circumstances, begin 
a new project. You would not start a new job. You would not get married. You would not move into a new uh, home on a, a retrograde Mercury because anything you begin under the retrograde Mercury will either fizzle out completely or has to be redone within the year. However, what you can do and will want to do is tie up the loose ends of unfinished projects. So if you've been looking at a car, let's say, and you've looked at this car and that car and that car and that car, and you just had, you've started the looking process. While you're not supposed to sign a contract under a retrograde Mercury, if you have put down a deposit on a car prior to Mercury going retrograde, that is considered an unfinished project and you want to finish it. Now, Mercury will enter the shadow of the retrograde. And when it's in the shadow of the retrograde, it's like the forerunner to the retrograde. Um, when that happens, everybody says it feels just like Mercury is retrograde. It does feel like Mercury's retrograde. Mercury is not retrograde. <laughs> It's in the shadow of the retrograde. So what you're going to do, if you possibly can, sign those contracts, start those new projects while Mercury is in the shadow. And um, Mercury moves into the shadow. Don't go away. On November 25th. All right. And join me next month when I describe December to you, because that's when Mercury will be retrograde, appearing to move backwards in the heavens. Then it stops and moves forward. It goes direct. And as soon as Mercury goes direct, it moves into the second shadow of the retrograde. In other words, I call it the prequel and the sequel, the, sh the prior shadow and the after the retrograde shadow. I find that I can get so tied up with details, even when it's in um, the shadow, that I, I just, this, this has to be done, that has to be done, this person needs my attention, etc. I find that in the sequel, in other words, in, uh, we won't use my jargon, after Mercury goes direct and it is in the second shadow, I get things done that needed to be done. I'm not saying that's how it will be for you. It just means that that is when I get up and get busy. <laughs> okay. Um, and Mercury, as I said, starts in Scorpio and finishes in Sagittarius. But it's slowing down its movement forward because it's getting ready to go retrograde. Mars, the planet of war, the planet of what we fight for, we take a stand for. Mars is passion. It, uh, Unlike Venus, which is love, Mars is passion. It is in Scorpio, which it co-rules. Pluto and Mars co-rule Scorpio. And so Mars is very intense. Scorpio is a very intense sign. Feels things very, very deeply. It is in Scorpio. Mars is in Scorpio till the 24th. <clears throat> Excuse me when it moves into Sagittarius. And so what you will do with Mars and Scorpio is fight for that those secrets. You'll fight to keep the secrets. You'll fight to unearth the secrets. You will be passionate about that. When it moves into Sagittarius, it's totally different. It's time to spread those wings and soar. And they ain't nothing gonna stop you. I love it. And uh, Jupiter 
um, is in Taurus. It's been in Taurus. It's retrograde. Jupiter is the greater benefic. It rules money. It rules um, truth. It rules God's law. It brings blessings. It's going to stay retrograde for quite a while. Um, stick with me, because if I remember correctly, it goes direct. Let me just look here. This is an ephemeris. Um, all right. It's still retro. Still retro. Okay. It go Jupiter goes direct on between December 30th and 31st, right around the new year. And if you've been waiting for money or whatever wonderful thing you've been waiting on, that is when Jupiter will go direct and you will be able to think about collecting what it has to offer. So I am going to now uh, get busy uh, with each sign and describing each sign and what to expect in November. So till next month, may the stars shine brightly on you and yours. Bye for now.